What is up? I am Mumphy. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, thank you so much for joining. Today, I kind of want to start a new series where I go over and cover individual mods that I've put on my 2020 Toyota Tacoma. And what a beautiful Tacoma it is. <laughs> but in this series, I kind of want to discuss certain mods individually to kind of help you consider what to do for your Tacoma. Now you don't necessarily have to choose the mod and the specific brand that I have, but the series I kind of want to explore each and every one and kind of what their purpose is. And hopefully it'll help you guys out in your own build. Before we get into this video, I'd appreciate it if you smash that like button. Consider subscribing if you find that this uh, helps you out. And hey, leave me a comment. Let me know what brand you guys went with for your mods. And let's get into it. All right, so this is one of the first mods you should consider if you are looking to go off-roading before a lift, before wheels and tires. I highly suggest actual sliders. Not the factory steps, but sliders. Now, the reason I say this is, uh, in my own experience, one of the first times I went off-road on a dirt trail, I ended up finding a high clearance jeep trail yes i had my lift on which helped mitigate some of my worry but i would have felt so much better had i had my sliders on before going on that trail and it's actually one of the reasons why i ended up purchasing a set of sliders so you want to protect that undercarriage with some high quality rock sliders don't do the factory steps they are more for aesthetic, and that's something if you're not looking to do off-road, you can go with. But if you are looking to do some off-road trails, regardless if it's fire roads or if it's high clearance 4x4 trails, get yourself a set of these. Because you do not want to damage that lower undercarriage right there. The sliders that I decided to go with are from CBI. And these are an overlanding style slider. They just come out flat, they act like a step. They do offer them with and without these top plates. I like having the top plates so I can get up and access anything on the roof rack. They've got good purchase for your foot. I like having the kick out just in case. It gives you just a little bit more foot space on the back. And because these are a bolt to frame slider i know that they're not going to go anywhere when you're looking at sliders there are a couple of options you can get weld on but i believe most people choose bolt on i think there's some good advantages to having a bolt on versus a weld on one being that you know if you shear a bolt head off all you have to do is just replace the bolt not really heard of anybody doing that but the possibility is always there weld on sliders can be a little bit more of a disadvantage if you ever have to replace them because then you have to basically cut the welds off the frame and then you have the potential of weakening the frame doing that. So the bolt-on options are really, really nice. As I said, there's plenty of options for sliders. You don't necessarily have to go with CBI and the exact same off-road sliders that I went with or the overlanding sliders that I went with. So find one that's within your budget. I highly recommend doing that. List out the mods that you want to do, what your budget is, what you want to spend, what your bare minimum price point is, all the way up to I'm not going to pay over this. And then you can do some research and find a great brand that's going to fit your needs. A couple of things to consider when you're looking for sliders is the material. Now there's a couple of different ways that they do the tubing. Now you have square tubing, which I've seen on a couple of builds, which is actually pretty cool. That's definitely a, an interesting style choice to go with the square tubing. I wasn't aware of the square tubing until months after I had actually already put mine on. Typically you'll see a cylinder tubing. And one thing to consider is to go DOM. And that's drawn over mandrel tubing. It's a little bit more sturdy. It's a little cleaner and easier for the guys to weld. You know you're going to get a sturdier product if you do the drawn over mandrel. Now that does add a little bit to the cost but at the same time you know pay once cry once you know. <laughs> Another option to consider is 
whether or not you actually want the slider to stick out and you actually have a step, or if you want something closer to uh, an angled slider that actually hugs up against the frame, or at least the body. Now I've seen some that look really nice. I can't remember what degrees that they are. They might be 45, 25, I think that's closer to 25 degree sliders. They give you an angle similar to where this, this body drops here and snugs up right up against it so you don't have to worry about hitting your leg and I don't, not necessarily hitting your leg, but when you get out of the truck, your leg isn't sliding across the tubing. Now for some, it's not an issue. For others, it might be. So be aware of those options out there when you're looking to get your own set of sliders. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you for joining. Hopefully it was informative. I gave you some pointers and some interesting aspects to consider for looking at sliders. If you like this series, let me know down in the comment section below if you'd like me to do some more coverage on other mods that I've done to my Tacoma. If, uh, if you've looked at a brand for your own sliders, leave that down in the comment section below. I'd love to expand the library that uh, these Tacomas have <laughs> as far as mods. It helps others and I really appreciate it. So if you did, smash that like button, leave a comment. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Perfect. Peace. Perfect.